Hey everybody, welcome into my Instagram page once again. Continuing with doing these uh, Instagram Live interviews uh, through this platform, it's been so great kind of utilizing Instagram to talk with drivers and to uh, interview them as well. So David Gravel will be joining me shortly. I see that he has joined, he's waved to me. Uh, David, you have to send me a request to be in the video, if that makes sense. So I'm looking for him to go ahead and send that request and he has very good he's obviously some of the drivers i've interviewed have not been <laughs> so david gravel world of outlaws driver is going to be joining me shortly once these two oh there he is how are you hello good how are you good i i need a longer arm i think <laughs> you can like set it up or prop it or whatever you yeah with. <laughs> yeah i'll definitely work on this one second <laughs> So to tell the viewers who are tuning in, David obviously uh, was the 2019 Knoxville Nationals winner, 51 World of Outlaws sprint car wins to your credits, competing in the iRace tonight, I know, for World of Outlaws. So thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I'm looking forward to it. The last two were very successful and uh, looking to get a little bit better. I'm not as good as at Knoxville uh, as the other tracks, so I got some work to do to compete with these really good guys. Yeah, so what was it? Well, first, before we get into the racing, uh, obviously, we're all at home right now with, with social distancing and the quarantine happening. What have you been up to? What have you been doing besides the iRacing? Uh, doing a little things around the house, um, laying low, really, um, just talking with lots of people. Um, really, I, I was in touch with uh, people at Fox and the World of Outlaws to try to make this stuff work out and, and continue to work out. So I've um, just been in touch with the racing world. Um, working out a little bit, uh, just cooking it, cooking every meal. It seems like we're cooking or doing dishes, <laughs> uh, you know, every couple hours. Um, but just playing a lot of iRacing, uh, playing a little bit of Xbox and trying to stream all my stuff on Twitch so people could connect with me while I'm doing all that stuff. Yeah, it, it, I, it's funny you mentioned the cooking and the dishwashing because I feel the same in this household. Are you a good cook? You you good at the cooking or no? The wife do uh, <laughs> I, I'm extremely good on the grill cooking. Other than that, I'm okay. Uh, that's what Jill's for. But uh, I feel like I'm a pretty good cook overall, though. But I get scared with pasta. I don't want to overdo it or underdo it. And I let her do those things. Fair enough. Well, we know one thing you're really good at, good at is the racing. So I want to go back to the I race that happened last week. Was it about what you expected? Was it more or less stressful than the real thing? What was it kind of like for you? So our original race we did on Dirt Vision, I was extremely stressed out. But when we did this Fox one, uh, they had Jeff and Mike Joy and then Johnny Gibson in my ear when they did the live view on me, yeah. uh, the in-car cam. And I never did that before. So you go from your earbuds on of hearing the car noises, and then they chime in under green flag, and it blocks all the sound out. And only one ear, you got Johnny Gibson announcing the race and Mike Joy and Jeff Gordon talking to me. So, like, I was totally all messed up. My equilibrium yep. was all messed up. I drove into somebody and crashed <laughs> and uh, gave me some air time. So, um, you know, it, it was okay. I just got to get used to it. It's like everything happens on the fly with these races. You know, we kind of have a plan together, but then things change or, you know, you got to just, it's live. So it's one of those things uh, you just go with the flow. Yeah, it gives new meaning to voices in your head, right? Uh, that is hard, yeah. that balance, for sure. Uh, but what have you been practicing more, and what's kind of your setup, your rig setup? Because we've been looking at different drivers set up from their home. Yeah, so I have the WR1 rig here. Uh, nice. Kyle Larson, Clint Boyer, um, I think I Kevin Harvick has one. Um, quite a bit people uh, have them. Kyle Larson had it first, kind of copied him, and then now – the guy is selling them like hotcakes. So um, I got that one with the direct drive wheel, which is supposedly one of the best ones out there. Um, and got a, a curved like 49 inch monitor, which works pretty good. So um, I'm not all about the uh, computer stuff. I'm new to iRacing and the simulator. I got mine like three months ago this off season. So good thing I have it or I don't know what I would be doing. Right. Well, that's that's for sure. I know it's been something that's kind of kept you guys busy throughout the course of uh, the quarantine. But I want to go reflect back on some moments in your career. And of course, Knoxville Nationals comes to mind, the big victory you had there just last season. What was it like winning that race? Yeah, it was definitely a dream come true. Just a dream week. I've luckily have had a couple dream weeks in my career already. Um, but having Exalta on the car with Jeff Gordon and Mark Weber and all the Exalta reps there, 
to perform like we did with JJR was just amazing. You know, Bobby and Philip uh, did a great job making everything look professional, and Philip gave me a great race car all week, and we won every race we competed in that week, and uh, you just couldn't ask for any more than that, and something I'll remember for a long time, and uh, hopefully everybody else does too. Oh, yeah, I think everyone certainly does remember it. You mentioned Jeff Gordon. Obviously, he has become a friend of yours. What kind of role has he played in your career? Um, you know, I met him just uh, a little over a year ago now, not this past Chili Bowl, but the Chili Bowl before. And uh, I feel like our relationship has evolved in a very fast pace. So for him to get me a truck ride and get me hooked up with Chevy and I'll be running Eldora uh, in the truck series, um, you know, without him, I wouldn't be able to do it. And we wouldn't have had the exalted colors on the car for Knoxville. And, uh, you know, that just really blew up with, with social media, with people there. It created a lot of buzz to get exalted back on the car, uh, especially in dirt racing, which they really haven't before. So it's just been really good. We talk uh, probably every week or so, keep in touch. And, uh, you know, he tries to give me a little bit of TV time here or there for these uh, <laughs> F1 races. So. Um, I'm just very fortunate to call my friend and uh, just excited to see where our relationship goes. Yeah, what's that mean to you? Because Jeff Gordon, uh, no matter what racing discipline you're in, is, is one of the greatest of all time. Uh, what does it mean to you that he has kind of taken an interest in you and your, your career? Yeah, it was really cool. You know, I never talked to the guy till Chili Bowl uh, a year and a half ago, and uh, he knew all about me. Uh, I was just hanging out with Rico at the bar after the races and I uh, started talking with Jeff and he was uh, super nice, super open. And uh, we just hit it off from there and exchanged phone numbers. And it's just really cool. Jeff's a really respected guy in the sport. He travels all over the country and world to to be in all sorts of motorsports events. And um, it's just really awesome. A guy that I grew up watching, you know, I grew up watching NASCAR. Uh, that's what my family liked, and we came from Connecticut, so that's all there was was asphalt racing. So, uh, you know, it was either Dale Earnhardt or Jeff Gordon growing up, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of Gordon fans out there for sure. That's a great person to have on your side, no question. Uh, you mentioned kind of your background and your upbringing. I am curious, walk me kind of through what first drew you into motorsports, how you even got initially started as a young guy. Yeah, so actually my mom's uh, background has uh, racing in their blood, um, her I believe uncle raced uh, when he was a lot younger, obviously. But my dad's side, uh, he owns a body shop. So I was in a body shop around street cars and fixing those at a young age. Um, but also he has people up north in Vermont racing right now, uh, asphalt late model. So I kind of have a little bit of uh, automotive or motorsports in my blood, uh, deep rooted. Um, and I came from Connecticut running quarter midgets at like six years old. And then from quarter midgets, we dabbled in legend cars and then micro sprints on dirt. And I just fell in love with the dirt and micro sprints and uh, just went that route. We had a track in Massachusetts and then it got more serious. Started traveling to Pennsylvania weekly. Uh, then we got our first sprint car and then uh, just evolved from there. Got into the four tens and the all-star circuit champions and then the world of outlaws. So it was just uh, one of those things I left high school early every Friday to travel to Pennsylvania to race and uh, just made it happen. Coming from Connecticut uh, was not the best place to start sprint car racing, but I'm extremely happy where my career went. Yeah, you have certainly made it happen, as I mentioned at the top of the show. 51 World of Outlaws sprint car wins. Uh, I want to know, for fans who may not be familiar, as familiar with World of Outlaws racing, uh, what kind of sets it apart from other types of racing? Just the amount we do it, I don't think there's any other series in the world, I would say, that races 80 to 90 times a year. Um, you know, some, like, say, USAC, for example, there's a bunch of different divisions that guys got to race to get up to that 90 times a year. But this is one sanctioning body that schedules 90 races every year for us. We start up in February and we end in November. So it's a very long schedule. And for us, unlike NASCAR, they go back and forth to the shop every week. There's times right. for us, uh, we don't go back to the shop for a month and a half. So our trailer has to be stocked up with enough engines, cars, spare parts, um, all those things to survive a, a month and a half on the road. You know, you could race, I would say, 20 to 25 times before you get back to the shop. So you got to be extremely prepared on the World of Outlaw Tour. It's just super yeah. grueling. And, and night in, night out, you have to be uh, on your game. You know, Donnie Schatz and Brad Sweet, we race, say, 70 times. 
and about 65 of them, they're in the top 10, and about 55 of them, they're in the top five. So you can't uh, skip any nights. That's a rigorous schedule, no doubt about it. Uh, final question I have for you is in terms of the ARCA race you did earlier this season. feels probably like forever ago now, back at Daytona, when you ended up finishing 12th. First stock car race for you, though, what was that experience like? Because I would say a 12th place finish, pretty respectable. Uh, it's not bad. I finished 12th with no uh, window on the right side or door. Uh, I had my cage exposed, but uh, it started pretty good. You know, at the test day, we went there and did well. And uh, the practice day, we did all right and qualified decent. But I just made a couple mistakes in the race. For me, never using a mirror before, never using a spotter before were the biggest um, feats for me. Uh, you really got to trust that spotter when he tells you something because it's all split-second decisions. So for me, I was a little bit disappointed in myself. Um, we ran 12th, but realistically, uh, we could have finished way better if I didn't get that damage. And uh, we, we just made a couple mistakes uh, trying to get out of the draft, go three wide, get hung out to dry with the draft, just something else I didn't have much experience with. Mm -hmm. So um now if i had to do it all over again i know i would do a lot better but i was just happy my first goal was to finish the race i know it's extremely tough to dodge all the wrecks and i got in one of the crashes but luckily it wasn't bad enough to end my day so i think we pitted like six or seven times that race just to keep putting tape and bear bond on that thing but it was a great experience to have frank kimmel on my side and uh, Chevy involved in GMS and, uh, you know, Jeff Gordon, uh, just all those people around just gives me a lot of confidence to have really good people around me and uh, Mike Bursley on the car with KBR development. So can't thank all those guys enough. You know, I was supposed to make my truck debut at Texas yeah. here uh, last week. So that, that was a bummer. We weren't able to do that. I went and tested at Texas. So who knows when my first race will be, but uh, I'll just have to wait and see and, and prepare when I know those answers. Yeah, absolutely. We look forward to it. Seeing you in the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series once that happens. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And best of luck to you tonight in, in the iRace on Fox Sports 1. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Take care. Bye.